I want to show you how a production manager might use Dynamics 365 Business Central to help them do their job better. So let's take a look at it. We're going to look at demand forecasts, the MRP and MPS process, bills of material. We'll look at routings as well. Then we'll take a look at production orders and how those are processed through the system. This is Business Central and I'm logged in as a production manager or a manufacturing manager. And the first thing I see is my role center. What's nice about the role center is it consolidates a lot of the activity that a production manager might have into one place. So you can access most of the system from one page. So let's take a look at it. The first thing we're gonna look at is the demand forecast. I can have a number of demand forecasts in my system and then use them as I want to. I've set up this one here for auto drip. This is the finished good that we're going to use throughout the demonstration. So what I've done is I specified a quantity that I want in my demand forecast for this particular product over a period of months. You can see that here. These are the months. Let's open this up a little bit. And I can have multiple products on the forecast if I want to, or I can have multiple forecasts as well. So any way that makes my job easier, it's going to make sense for me. And I have this forecast broken down by location. If I want to, I could just have one number that covered all locations, but I've decided to break it out. And in this case, we're looking at one location called Maine. Next, let's take a quick look at the MRP process. These are worksheets. We'll go to worksheets, planning worksheets, and I'm going to use this one here. I can use this over and over again. I can refresh it if I want to. What you see here is an MRP process that is looking at a couple of things. It's looking at my demand forecasts. It's also looking at any open POs, any open sales orders. It's looking at the total demand. It's looking at availability. Do I have POs that are coming in? What do I have in my various locations? The MRP process looks at this. And I've also set this up to create production orders. This will automatically create production orders to meet the demand that I forecast and I have in my system at the current time. And you can see those here. I've got production orders here. I've got purchase orders here that are all set up to go. And in this case, they're just suggested. If I want to act on that, I can just select the items I want, the line items here, and I can process them. It's easy to do. I can just select the items that I want. Here, I'll select this emergency item right here, right? It needs that. I've got an exception here. I can take my time. I can refresh this anytime I want to. I can also share it with others. I can break it down by buyer, by user, and they can have their own set of things that they're interested in and take a look at the results. And to activate this process, it's very simple. I'll go to prepare and I'll generate the plan. It will regenerate the plan if I wanted to. Once I've got the plan regenerated, I can also then select the actions that I want it to take. Once I've done that, I just say carry out the actions. These are the results I'll get. And what this means, for example, the assembly order that I've got selected, it will create an assembly order in my system, a brand new one. You can see that it'll also create production orders, purchase orders, and also transfer orders from one location to another. I'll go ahead and hit OK. It's going to create that assembly order. And I'm done with this. This is an easy to use process. It's easy to set up. Let's take a look at how we might set it up. Let's take a look at the finished good item that we're going to be working with in this demonstration. It's called AutoDrip. AutoDrip is an assembled product. I'm making it in my location. This is the item card. It tells the system about the item. You can see I've got a lot of information here about the item. And this is for the MRP process here. This is the replenishment area. It tells the system how I'm going to get this item. In this case, the AutoDrip is something that I'm going to manufacture and I'm going to use a production order to do that. Other items I'm going to purchase or maybe I'll do an assembly. So there's a number of ways that I can set up an item to actually acquire that. And if I use stock keeping units, I can have different methods in different locations for the same item. But in this case, I'm going to simplify it. I've got one location. I'm going to use this. I'm going to create a production order to make that item. And then I'm going to use purchase orders to get the components. Let's take a look at the production bill of materials for this item. These are the component items I'm going to use to create the auto drip. And there's two different types of items I can have on the line. I can have an item, as these all are, 
or I can have a production bill of material. If I use the production bill of material, it'd be more like a phantom bill of material in this particular bill of material. In this case, I know this is a subassembly. The reservoir assembly is a separate item that I make and store in my shelves until I need it. Here's another bill of material. This one, I've got a number of different versions. I can set up different bill of material versions for a single item. Here's a good example. Here's one item, this is a finished good item. I can look at the different versions. I've got those versions here. I can see them displayed in this case. This shows me the different versions and the quantity of each item. In this case, the versions are primarily identical, but I can vary them if I want to, and I can select the version that I want to use in a particular production order. Next, let's take a look at routings. Here are my routings right here. I've got this one for the out of drip, and this specifies how this product is gonna go through my organization, my manufacturing and assembly organization. And you can see here, it goes through three work centers. And I've specified setup time and the runtime for this particular item as it goes through the various work centers. And there's different statuses of bills of material and also routings in the system. This one's certified, so that means it's ready to go and be used. But I also have a new status, under development status, and then a closed status. And I can manage different bills of material and routings doing different statuses and versions. All right, so I've shown you the background of this production process. I've shown you the item, the bill of material, the routing, different versions of those. Now let's take a look at an actual production order. The production orders can be entered in by hand or generated automatically by a process in Business Central. I used the MRP and MPS process to create a new production order. So let's take a look at those. On my tiles here, on my role center as a manufacturing manager, as a production manager, I've got these different tiles that show the different stages that production orders are in in my system. This is handy. This gives me an instant view of what's happening in my system and I can drill down and see the items below. So here I have a number of different production orders that have been generated by the MRP NPS process. Let's sort them here by date, and let's open it up. So this is one production order. I'm making a finished good. Here's the quantity here. This is ready to go. And the way that production orders work in Business Central is I'll run it through different statuses of the production order. So right now, these are firm planned production orders. And I specified that when I ran the MRP process and MPS process and said, I want the production orders that are created to have a status of firm planned. So this is what we have right now. So I can change the status as this goes through the process, I can change the status to recognize that this thing has been processed. And in this case, I'm using a backflush method on this bill of material and the work centers. So there's not a whole lot to do here from a bookkeeping standpoint. If I wanted to, I can track individual components, I can track individual work orders manually and see them go in and out of work and process. If you wanna do that, Business Central can accommodate that and it can vary it by item and by bill of material. So in this case, again, these are back flushed items, which means when I bring them out of production, it's gonna back flush the components and also the cost of the machine centers and the work centers. So I go to change status here. It is firm planned right now. I wanna release it. I'm gonna update the unit costs. And now that production order has been changed to a different status. So let's take a look at it. Let's go back to my role center. It's now a released production order. So these are my current released production orders. If I look at this order that we were looking at, I know that it's been completed. I then want to finish this. It's easy to do. I'll just go change the status and finish it, and I'm done. And that item has been created in my manufacturing organization. The components have been relieved. The cost of the work centers and machine centers has been done as well. So now I've got a new cost on that item based on that production run. It's now an in inventory. Before we continue, if you like this type of content, the best way to support us and to help others find this content is to subscribe to our channel, activate the notifications, and share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for helping us grow this channel. Let's get back to the demonstration. Let's take a look at another product. So let's take a look at the auto drip product. This is a finished good item. It's similar to the one that we just processed, but let's start from the MRP process. 
So I ran the MRP process and I'm getting these suggestions for new production orders. So I'm gonna select them. So all I need to do is this here. I'm gonna select those. So I've selected those. I'm gonna carry out the action messages. I'm gonna create a production orders here. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm done with that process. Back at my role center, I can look at the firm plan production orders that we just created from the MRP process. We can see those here. So let's take a look at this one here. Let's start this one. Here's a production order. It's in a firm plan production order status. We can take a look at the components. We can see all the components here and the quantities for that. We can also look at the routing. This is the routing through the different workstations. You can see those here. And I don't have to close the quantity out of this whole entire production order at one time. If I want to, I can do it on a daily basis or whenever I want to until it's complete. But in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and look at the production order as a whole. Once it's completed, I'm gonna process that. So let's change the status again, or release it. It is now a release production order. Let's go and finish it up and change status, finish it off, and that's it. The finished good has been created. The cost of the components have been relieved from inventory and the machine costs and work center costs have been also relieved and put into the finished good cost. Let's take a quick look at some nice reporting that's available from the role center. Let's take a look at capacity first. Let's take a look at the planning availability report. I'll run that. This report shows planning availability for a specific item. It shows a timeline of the quantities involved. I've got forecast items in here. I've got actual sales orders that are being deducted from that forecast. And I show planned production orders that are planned and ready to go. You can see all those here. All this information is in my system and it's ready to process. Let's take a look at some production reports. Here's a production shortage report. I'll run for my entire inventory and we can see it here. These are items that the system is showing is gonna be a shortage. I need to resolve these before I can make those items. I may have to acquire more items. Maybe I just have to count to make sure I've got those items and they're not mistakenly accounted for in the system. This is the detailed calculation report. And what it does, it shows the costed elements of a bill of material. So for this particular item, this is the one that we were just focusing on, auto drip. I've got costs in there for the work centers. You can see that here. If I scroll down, I've got current costs for the items from my inventory. So this is the costed bomb right here. I can use this in my planning. I can use it for analysis as well. In this demonstration, I showed how production managers might use Dynamics 365 Business Central. We looked at demand forecasts and how that can drive the MRP and MPS process. We looked at bills and material, how we can have different versions of that, and also routings and how we can have different versions of the routings as well. And we processed a couple production orders to see how that goes to run that production order through different stages to end up with the finished good.